Hi, Randy Fairfield here, Mr. EdTech, and today I'd like to share with you how you can combine Edmodo and Google Apps for Education to create a platform for your students for project-based learning. That's totally amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. First, just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm an Edmodo certified trainer, and by this fall, I'm hoping to become a Google certified trainer as well. And I've had the privilege of working in two pretty amazing schools uh, that were very innovative. One was New Horizons, which is a dropout recovery school in the Pasco School District. And the other uh, was Three Rivers Homelink, which was like a parent partnership in the Richland School District. And uh, in these places, I was able to leverage uh, Edmodo and Google Apps for Education to really get the best out of my students. And I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, with you today how you might go about doing that. So why Edmodo? With lots of different school districts buying Chromebook carts and switching to Google Apps for Education, you might be thinking that the next logical step is for you yourself to start using Google Classroom. And Google Classroom is great uh, on a limited scale, but Edmodo is really that social learning platform that you can really get the most out of if you are using it effectively. And today I'd like to share with you how you can still use a lot of those other Google Apps for Education like Google Drive, Docs, Slides, Forms, Sheets, Google Sites. Start using these things uh, and pair them with Edmodo fairly seamlessly to get your students doing things like project-based learning. Edmodo gives students a platform, a social learning platform, where they can engage in things like project-based learning at a level that they simply would not be able to do if you switched over to Google Classroom. And so today I'd like to show you how you might consider going about doing that uh, and really getting the most out of your use of Edmodo. So what is project-based learning? Project-based learning is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an engaging and complex question, problem, or challenge. It's a little different than some teacher-centered approaches, such as a lecture where you stand and deliver, students are taking notes, and there's a time and a place for that. But project-based learning is a bit different. It really starts with inquiry, it gives students a chance to really investigate, and it gives them a chance to show their learning, oftentimes in very unique uh, ways. So how do you go about assessing that uh, learning that's taking place? It's a little different. Uh, in a traditional method of assessment, students are given tests such as multiple choice, fill in the blank, matching essays, sentence completion, that type of thing. Uh, they study the notes that they've taken from your stand and deliver. Authentic assessment's a little different, and authentic assessments are a great way to measure, measure the learning that's taking place in project-based learning. So authentic assessment is a form of assessment in which students are asked to perform real-world tasks that demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills. So rather than just a paper and pencil type test, students have to show their learning in a real-world format. And Edmodo gives them a platform to be able to do that. The Google Apps for Education gives them a platform to be able to do that, where rather than having their audience be just the teacher, uh, their audience can be more global. And I found that for students, the key to getting them engaged often is with their audience. If they're doing something just for you, it might mean a lot less to them if they're doing it for a more global setting and it has a real world application. And so how do you measure these things? Well, I'd like to show with you an example of a project-based learning assignment that I gave my students in a middle school U.S. history class and how I used authentic assessment uh, to engage, uh, to measure whether or not they were engaged with the learning. So in my middle school U.S. history class, we were studying the election of 1800 and with all the media circus surrounding uh, Donald Trump and him being uh, the Republican nominee, uh, my students' awareness of elections and their interest uh, and politics was pretty heightened. And so with that, I wanted to leverage that. And I saw an opportunity to engage with my students in some project-based learning over an extended period of time and really capture their interest while also building their skills related to the social studies standards that I could bring into this project. 
Uh, I also really wanted to differentiate for my students and allow them to express their learning in creative and unique ways while still meeting the standards. And so here's what I came up with. I came up with this question. I asked them, what might the election of 1800 look like if the candidates running had the same level of access to technology that the candidates today have? How might that election look different? And how could we recreate that in our class? And so I split the students up into two different groups. Half the class ran one campaign, the other half ran the other campaign. And we chose uh, to have each group be representative of Alexander Hamil Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson, since those were the two most vocal uh, candidates in that election cycle. I gave the students uh, the option to pick what role they were going to have within their campaign as a way to differentiate for them and for them to uh, gravi uh, you know, gravitate towards what they were interested in learning more about and showing how they were doing the learning. And so I had a campaign manager, a research director, a pollster, uh, a speech writer, a speech giver, a debater, a website developer, social media manager, a print media specialist, and an event coordinator. And all of these roles, in some way or the other, uh, tapped into some of the Google Apps for Education, using Google Drive to help organize things, uh, using the research tools available through Google Search for the, for the research director, uh, using Google Forms for polling, uh, using Google Docs for the speech writer, and on and on. And so I had the students integrating the Google Apps for Education uh, into this project. And what was really, really neat about that was some of the students um, would gravitate, gravitate towards one role and some would gravitate towards another. And I let them within their group decide who was going to do what. But I also let them know that they weren't just going to be responsible for one thing, that they as a group, as a whole, were responsible for working together to help each other out to play these different parts. And it was really, really neat to see the level of collaboration that took place with these students. And Edmodo is what helped facilitate that, which is what I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, so how do I assess the learning that's taking place in this huge project, right? Uh, it can get to be kind of hairy. Uh, I came up with this scoring rubric here, and I really tried to keep it as open-ended as possible because I didn't want to stifle the student's creativity. I probably could have done a better job of tying uh, the rubric in with the standards, and that was something after the project that I self-reflected on a bit, but uh, it's definitely doable. So what role did Edmodo play in this whole project? Well, the small groups and the badge features were a really, really important part of how this all worked. Uh, so within the small groups, I had two different groups, the Hamilton campaign and the Jefferson campaign, and half the students I placed in one group and half were in the other. Uh, I also like to award badges to the students. So as they completed jobs and tasks within their campaigns, I would award them badges that related to those projects and those tasks so they could track their progress. The small group was a really key feature. Uh, of giving the students a collaborative place to all work together uh, on this project after they left the classroom. And within uh, their small group, I would pin a post, I'd use the pin to post feature on Edmodo, to have uh, the main Google Drive folder for their campaign linked up top, to have a link to those campaign roles for them to refer to, and for them to refer to that scoring rubric. So I pinned that post up to the top, and then below, uh, the students used the Edmodo small group feature to collaborate with one another uh, as they worked on this project. It was, it was totally amazing to see uh, the level of collaboration happen in the classroom, but also online. And Edmodo was a key f piece of that collaboration. So how did I get that seamless integration between Google Drive and the Google Apps for Education? 
with Edmodo. Well, you can see here on this pinned post that this top link here linked into the student's Google Drive folders that was really the hub of all of their uh, digital work on this project. So inside of this folder uh, were the Google Forms, the Docs, the Slides, the Sheets, everything that the group had created that related to this project went into that folder. Uh, besides that, I also had two Google Docs that were just viewable to the students. I right clicked, got the shareable link and said students with this link can view and then shared that link uh, on the in the Edmodo small group on this pinned post. And this had the campaign roles and this here had the scoring rubric. So it's that right clicking and getting that shareable link and then posting that shareable link uh, to your Edmodo note or to your assignment that can really get that integration to happen and really blend the two together. Besides that, Edmodo has really done a great job over the past month of getting their Google Drive integration with the Edmodo library together. And I'd really encourage you to check out my website at mrredtech.com to check out uh, this Edmodo topic here about that integration so that you can learn more. It's getting better and better. And by this fall, it's going to be really, really seamless. And so I'm really excited about the direction that Edmodo is going with that Google Drive integration in the library and otherwise. So make sure that you check these links out to learn more. So who was the audience for this project-based learning that the students were engaged in? Certainly I was a part of it, but I felt like I was a small part. They were each other's audience, and I can assure you that they cared more about what each other was doing in this project than they cared about what I thought. I also let them know that their principal and their parents uh, would be aware of the progress that they were making on this project. And through Edmodo and Google Drive, I could easily share the work that the students were doing with those audiences. And I showed the students that I was doing that. And so doing so gave such a greater level of meaning to the students for the work that they did. They weren't just doing something as an individual for me. They were doing something as a group for a greater audience. And that led to higher levels of engagement. Google Apps for Education and Edmodo was what helped facilitate that and make that all happen. And it really was a great experience for everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're inspired to jump in and start using things like Edmodo, Google Apps for Education, maybe try out a little project-based learning and authentic assessment. Uh, for me, doing things like this really helped transform my practice and get me excited about teaching. And the more excited that I am about teaching, the more excited my students are about learning, and it just makes things so much more fun.